What's up everybody, Peter McKinnon here. Welcome back to yet another video. And yes, today we're talking R3. Got the chance to use it over the past couple of weeks, most recently at the racetrack with a professional race car driver. We thought those two things paired well together so that we could really test out like the 30 frames per second and the stacked sensor to see how good rolling shutter was being eliminated or how much improved it's been since the DSLR days and using something like a 1DX Mark II or a Mark III, etc. So to start things off, just jumping right in. The overall experience of using the R3 is good. I would say it felt very much so like I got back in the saddle with the 1DX Mark II and it was just quieter. The last like full pro body I used was the 1DX Mark II with an actual mirror. So the tactile and like haptic feedback of that mirror going up and down and hearing it, uh, it's really weird not hearing it now and just hearing like what it should sound like through this little speaker on the back. Um, if you listen, that's just like an electronic sound playing through the speaker, so that's, that's throwing me off a bit. It, it was a little bit of a different shape, but after like an hour or two using it again, it felt just like I was using a Pro Series DSLR from Canon. You've got the grip on the side, you've got the huge battery, which was great for battery life. I forgot how good it was, and I charged, I think, six or seven of those batteries, and I brought them all with me to the racetrack, and I didn't change a battery one time. If you go back to 2017, 2018, uh, when I was vlogging with the 1DX Mark II every single day, I remember I didn't have to bring as many batteries with me because I could get through almost the entirety of a day with one battery, if not two tops. Now, one of the new things, obviously wanting to test out was the frames per second, 30 frames per second. So using the new tracking mode, which Canon have for cars, uh, it made this pretty effortless. When you hold the camera up to a vehicle, it automatically locks on. You don't have to half engage the shutter. You literally just point the camera at a vehicle and it tracks. So throwing that camera in servo mode, you get the high speed plus mode on, you're literally just whip panning and the the camera does all the work for you. Yeah, see what it means. <laughs> wow, but like the tracking actually works ridiculous. I did nothing. Locked on the whole way from the distance when it was small right up around the entire turn like I did nothing So then it comes into question like how good is the rolling shutter in this camera? It's the first stacked CMOS sensor that Canon has done essentially what's happening is like RAM is being built into a sensor now to make that camera process faster So you're getting super fast readouts and that's why this camera is primarily targeted towards sports photographers people that are doing some kind of sports journalism be it that you're shooting automobiles, F1, any type of Olympic sport. And I can only imagine this technology getting better and better as more and more cameras come out, which just means things are gonna be faster, reading faster, which also means data is going to be increasing. When you are taking 30 frames per second, those memory cards are gonna get eaten up real fast. I just took like 400 pictures. <laughs> you couldn't even hear it. Look, I got the whole play-by-play, -play. look at this. I would even say one of the daunting aspects of editing all these photos and trying to find like the one frame that I liked, it was a lot longer of a process than it typically is because I had to go through three times the amount of photos that I typically would. Now it did capture every single frame so I could basically watch back the entire drift of a corner with photos not actually being video, looked like video, and you can really fine pick the exact shot you want. So like I imagine if you are up against the boards and you're shooting hockey and any type of sporting event like you're gonna capture the exact moment that you need almost without fail especially with all the new autofocus modes it seems like Canon's just kind of adding to that roster every single camera release like the big camera you've got cars you've got people you've got pets eyes helmets motorcycles it'll lock on to these things now that's twofold for me that's really great because when I'm shooting professionally or I need to get something I want the confidence that I'm going to get it but it does eliminate a lot of what the photographer uses 
used to do themselves. Part of the fun sometimes is setting the focus, is making sure everything's dialed, going through all the settings. That's what makes photography photography when you're in control of all the aspects. So the more that these computers inside cameras now are taking over all those aspects and doing it for you, that's great in some instances, but it might not be for everyone. That's an entirely different conversation though, just something I thought was worth mentioning. Obviously you can shoot manual, you don't have to have it track anything for you, you don't even have to shoot high speed burst. But in that point, if you weren't doing any of these things, the R3 probably isn't the camera that you're looking to buy. Shot plenty of 4K 120. For my experience that day outside in the sun, it did not overheat. That's one of the things I was looking for, I was keeping in mind, like how long will it be until this camera tells me I can't shoot on it anymore? And I did not, in all the testing I did, have that come up once. Unlike the R5, it seems like this camera is doing a bit of a better job. About to go do some high speed shots. 30 frames per second. We'll see how fast this is. Put it to the test against uh, a professional race car driver. So as far as the 30 frames per second go, I can honestly say in all of the time that I've been taking photos, I have never used a faster camera. And it's never been easier to focus on something going extremely fast and nail focus most of the time. There were a few times where it missed, I mean, the, the tracking works good. It works good. If the car comes too close into frame and then you whip pan by and during that whip pan, you're just way punched in and the whole frame is the car or you've only got like the back quarter, it can lose it a bit there because I think it's looking for the whole vehicle to track. But when you've got full visual of the full car, just it just locks on and you just follow it and it's, it's not easy. Something to keep in mind, if you were tracking something and it gets really, really close, really, really fast, you could run into a little bit of an issue, readjusting the composition so that the car stayed in frame the entire time, and then I had no issues with the tracking. For me, in my world, this is definitely a vloggable camera now that it has a flip LCD, a swivel LCD. That is what I wanted back in 2017 when I was using the 1DX Mark II, so that is always just something cameras should have. It's 2021, cameras should not not have a swivel LCD end of discussion. Now the camera is lighter than its DSLR counterparts, but when you're out there actually shooting and you've got a 1535 and you got a 7200 RF lens on a pro body, like it's heavy, it's a heavy camera. So that is for me a bit of a downside because I've gotten used to the smaller no grip R5 mirrorless, which again is also big for a mirrorless camera, albeit smaller than what you used to have with a 1DX2 or 3 and a 7200, it's still a big kit which didn't seem to be a problem for this FPV drone. This is the only R3 in Canada that we are putting on an FPV drone. So funny story about this, we were contemplating if we should do this or not, and should we put the camera on the drone? And I, I decided yes, because I wanted to see what some aerial footage would look like with the R3 flying on a drone. That's cool. You can feel the weight, yeah. Lo and behold, signal was lost on said FPV and the drone crashed, but the lens took the brunt of the impact. So uh, the lens snapped off at the body and I think that entirely saved the body. I, I can't be certain on that. I don't know what hit the ground first because you can see from this clip, you know what I know. Uh, but when we did find the R3, it was perfectly fine. Uh, the sensor was exposed, but put the lens back on and the rest of the footage that you see of that Porsche was shot with the same camera that crashed. So let's do it again. Let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> it worked fine immediately after. There was almost no dirt on it at all. The lens, however, was not fine. 
Sorry, Canon. Now, I don't have too many examples of good like rolling shutter to show you what a stacked CMOS sensor does opposed to one that's not, but typically you're gonna see a lot of that rolling shutter exposed when you are panning fast. Maybe there's a lot of straight, if there's a fence in the way or a bunch of posts or flagpoles or vertical objects in frame, those are what's gonna kind of give away to how bad or how not bad rolling shutter is in a camera. So here's a shot of me just panning this Porsche as it rips by. You can't really see anything vertical. What we tried to do is slow down the footage and look at the pylons plus the vertical supports in the railing, the guardrail that was right up front in the foreground. None of those things look warped or distorted at all. I didn't notice any kind of horrible rolling shutter because usually when you see it, you're like, oh wow, that's bad. That's not, that's not good. I'm happy with that. If you did notice anything, let me know in the comments below. Now when editing these photos, because this is a brand new camera, I wasn't actually able to edit any of the raw files. You're stuck with editing JPEGs. There was no converter, there was no software that I could use to convert um, these raw files to DNGs so that I could import those into Lightroom and really kind of play with the flexibility of the raw file to see how far I can push it one way or another. So there's always those things to keep in mind when you're using a prototype camera. Now, would I buy this camera for myself? Yes and no. So yes would come into play where I have found myself interested in more automotive photography and off-road photography, just like moving vehicles photography. I've, I've really been kind of having fun with that lately. So I feel like it would be handy, but the no side comes from, I wouldn't want to spend the money on a camera for the times I'm going to just shoot automotive stuff because it's not a huge chunk of my business or my career or even my portfolio right now. I don't really see a point in me owning it. If it is something that you do more predominantly, be that that's automotive or sports or anything where you need a high speed shutter, then yeah, absolutely. That would be a great camera for you. But for my needs right now, I'm more focused on video. I'm more focused on landscape photos. If I continue to shoot automotive and more off-road stuff, then yeah, I would for sure keep one of those in my Pelican case for those times when, hey, we're gonna jump a side-by-side -side right now. I'd be like, I'm gonna switch cameras because I want to track it and get 30 frames per second to make sure I don't miss this. All in all, it was a good experience. I had a lot of fun using it. I fell right back into the saddle with how to use it and what a pro camera does. The eye tracking autofocus, looking through the viewfinder worked pretty great. I found like it got me to the area where I needed to go. And then using the joystick on the back was really fast at being able to just rip back and forth over that screen. Back in the day, you had to almost, it felt like you had to go on a grid and it would take quite a while. And now when you're moving that little joystick at the back, that thing goes so fast to the exact zone you need. With the technology and cameras today and cameras like this one, there should be no reason autofocus and getting things focused fast should be any problem at all. I think ultimately what this camera does for me is gets me more excited for what could maybe potentially be something like an R1 one day where we're taking all of the features of this super fast sports camera and the photography based autofocus and the stacked sensor and it meets the video capabilities of the R5 and then those two cameras come together and create what would, I don't know, be the R1. That would be for me like a dream camera. If that happened, I would be like, okay, I'll, I'll take three of those and then that will just be everything I need. Backup cameras, double cameras, A cam, B cam, C cam, drone cam. All of the cams. That would be very, very exciting. So for me, I see maybe the future going that direction. I think that's what a lot of the speculation was before the R3 was announced that it would be something called the R1. Canon never confirmed that or never even leaked anything about an R1 that was entirely the internet. <laughs> but uh, hopefully that's, that's part of the roadmap. That's where all lines go. But for now, sports photography, Photographers, automotive photographers, anyone shooting high speed, rejoice, because you will absolutely love this camera. All right, guys, that's it for me. I hope you enjoyed this video. If I left anything out and there's more specifics that you want, more camera tests that you want with the R3, let me know in the comments below. I can certainly reach back out to Canon and see the next time I can get an R3 in my hands to run more of those tests with you. I'm not really an analytical tests at the computer type of guy. I like to go out and shoot things more and just kind of give my overall experience using a camera. I know very fast if I like it or if I don't. I also know what makes my life really, really easy when it comes to shooting, which I do a lot of. So that was just kind of my preliminary first real photo shoot day with the R3 at a track. Had a lot of fun. Hit that like button if you like this video, subscribe if you aren't already, and, and I will see you in the next video. And if you missed the little hype reel, the super cool hype reel that just makes me wanna smash things, so pumped. That's it guys, see you in the next one.
Once again, here we go Know the name, know the flow Turn me up a little more I'm setting traps, I'm alone You know you whack, I'm a maniac Boy, you know I'm black to the bone Pick a place, pick a date I go go cool, pick a low